Hej allihopa! Hi everyone and welcome to another video from Say It In Swedish. I'm your host Joakim and today we're gonna talk about Swedish prosody. And if you don't know what prosody means, it is basically the music part of a language. It's the melody and it can tell us so so much uh, about what's being said and the mood of the speaker and what is emphasized in a, a sentence and so on. But there are a few key things to... Stop! Be quiet! Before we start, I wanted to remind you of SayItInSwedish.com, as always, where I've got more free content for you for uh, learning Swedish. There is a free beginner course over there, and if you want to support me and unlock some extra stuff on the site, you can do that on Patreon. All the links are in the description down below. When talking about prosody in Swedish, we have three major things to talk about. So we have word stress, sentence stress, but we also have word accent, which is something that I've talked about in another video, you can check that out here. Um, that's a bit of an old video and this video is gonna basically replace it a little bit and yeah. I will, it's a brief video but it talks about a lot more than just the accent, right? So, when talking about word stress, major thing here in Swedish is that all stressed syllables are long. So either you have a long vowel and follow, uh, followed by a short consonant for instance, but we can also have a short vowel follow, followed by a long consonant. And this is something that we have in, in Swedish, Swedish in Sweden and it's called the quantity rule, quantitetsregeln. So it means that we have a long uh, a long syllable but either the consonant is short and the vowel is long or the vowel is short and the consonant is long and I have uh, I have an example here to um, so that you can hear uh, what this is about so we have for instance mäta which means to measure mäta but we also have mäta Meta, which means to feed, to to make someone not being hungry, to feed basically. Meta. So as you can hear, meta has a long vowel, and meta has a long consonant. Right? Meta, meta. Can you hear the difference? The the difference. They are not the same word. Meta and meta meta forest is scary can you hear the difference meta long vowel short consonant and meta the short vowel and long consonant meta meta and meta Let's take a few examples so that you can really hear the difference. So we have the city Riga. Riga. Long consonant, a eh, long vowel, I'm sorry, and a short consonant. Riga. But then we have the verb rigga, which means to rig. It's a loan from English, so to rig. Riga. Short vowel, long consonant. Riga. Rigga. All right. Then we have sätta, the letter Z or Z. Sätta. But we also have sätta, which means to sit down or to put or set something. Sätta. 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 So as you can see or hear here, these stressed syllables are always long. It doesn't matter if the vowel is long. Uh, if not, the consonant is gonna be long. And now since we are talking about individual words, let's talk about the word accents. And this is something that is super fun to talk about because this is what makes Swedish 
stand out among languages and also Norwegian. It's what makes Swedish so lovable and so fun and it gives Swedish this sing-song accent that a lot of people love and are curious about. Curious about. And the fun thing here is that we have this with Norwegian but not with Danish, although Swedish and Danish are more related than Norwegian and Swedish. So that's a weird thing. But <laughs> at the border, Swedish and Norwegian are sometimes hard to differentiate from another. So that's a, f a total, <laughs> it's a totally another video, but uh, it's uh, something fun to think about. So in Swedish, we have two word accents. We have accent number one, which is also called the acute accent. And then we have accent number two, which is also called the grave accent. And the first accent is your average type of accent. I mean, uh, other languages uh, have this accent as well. It's just a racing tone. And uh, sounds like this. Andem. Andem. Kind of goes like this. Weep. Weep. Andem. Andem. This means the duck. Right? Andem. And then we have accent number two, the grave accent, which is the fun accent. It's a melodic musical accent that we have in Swedish. And the remarkable thing here is basically that, yeah, it, it, we have two syllables that, ha that are stressed with this accent. So any word with this accent has to have a minimum of two syllables. So here we have the word on them, on them, not on them, but and then and uh, it's a kind of a falling tone to me it's uh, like it there are two peaks basically we have a major peak and then a, a smaller not as high peak so it's basically a falling tone but it goes like this another classic example of two homographs two words uh, that look the same but have different accents in this case are Tomten and Tomten. So Tomten is the definite form of Tomt. The here where I am, the private property here is the yard. It's where your house is. It's the Tomt, and the definite form is Tomten. But then we have the definite form of Tomte, which is Tomten, and Tomten means the gnome or Santa Claus, Father Christmas, Tomten. So we have Tomten, Tomten. That's this, Tomten. And with grave accent, Tomten, Tomten, Tomten. It's the rising tone, Tomten. And then we have the falling tone, Tomten, Tomten. It goes down, right? As I said before, check out my video on this in the card here for a bunch of more examples of the difference between accent one or the acute accent and accent two or the grave melodic musical accent. And before we move on to the sentence stress, I just wanted to give you an example of a word that utilizes accent two or the grave accent without being just two syllables, but more than that. So we have the word motorsåg, which means chainsaw. Motorsåg. Motorsågsmassaken. It's a chainsaw massacre for you film buffs out there. <laughs> so chainsaw is motorsåg. And here we have two, more than two syllables. We have motorsåg. 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 And I, I say såg because I have the R and the S there, so it's a ret retroflex, uh, retroflex sound, and I talked about this in my, in these two videos that you'll find in the card as well. So, the thing here is we have two things. Mu, then unstress, to sog, mu, to sog, mu, sog, mu, to sog, mu, to sog. So the second syllable here is totally unstressed. You you could almost leave it out and you will still be able to recognize the word. So, mot såg, mot såg, 
motorsåg. Motorsåg. All right? Mo. Down here. <laughs> It's unstressed. Motorsåg. Motsåg. So a Swede would definitely recognize this word without this syllable almost at all. All right? But this uh, brings me to my second point here. This is a compound. Motor. Motor. Also a word with a uh, with, uh, grave accent. Motor. Motor. <laughs> And then såg, which means saw. Motor is motor. Motor saw, basically. It's a compound. And with this uh, rule of thumb, you will be able to spot a word with accent too, because compound words, they get this. So you'll find this musical accent in compound words. Great, right? You will find it in a lot of uh, group one verbs. If you check out my lessons on SalingSwedish.com, I talk about verbs in groups and group one verbs are all the verbs that you would create on your own with, by just adding an A, for instance. These, in their infinite form, they will get this accent. And obviously also the first syllable has to be stressed or else we won't have this grave accent. And before we end this video, obviously we need to talk about sentence stress. And sentence stress in Swedish is very, very interesting because in Swedish all important words are stressed. All important words are stressed. And all other words, they lose their accent. And this is because these accent, accents, they are pretty much defined uh, on stress, you know. So the stresses get these tones, but if the syllables in these words are unstressed, we won't have these accents or these tones. So, like I said, All important words are stressed and all other words, they lose their accent. And uh, here's an example. For instance, we can say Trevligt att träffas. Trevligt att träffas. So, trevligt att träffas. Träffas is emphasis here. It's stressed. Trevligt att träffas. träffas. So, um, if I say trevligt. 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 It's an, a word with a grave accent with this melodic accent. Trevligt. But in this sen sentence, trevligt att träffas. Trev trevligt. Tre it's a monotone, right? Trevligt att träffas. And träffas gets this accent. But if I emphasize uh, trevligt instead, it sounds like this. Trevligt att träffas. Trevligt att träffas. Trevligt att träffas. 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 It's monotone. Träffas. Trevligt att träffas. Trevligt att träffas. Can you hear the difference here? I hope that you can. I think this is very, very, very interesting. Now your takeaway from this video should be that word accents, they aren't really that important. I mean, they don't have them in uh, Finland Swedish, for instance. Uh, so we can understand them as well and some dialects don't have these uh, accents as well stress is super important for Swedes to understand you so uh, if you want just to work on your Swedish so that people will have the patience with you to understand you and listen to you work on stress and syllable length word accent is just nothing you need to prioritize, right? It's something you can do later if you want to sound like, if you want to sound Swedish and tweak your pronunciation. Word accent is a fun thing, but not necessary. All right, that was quite a ride, a very short introduction to Swedish prosody. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have more questions, please let me know in the comments down below and I might make a follow-up video with all your uh, questions and I'll try to answer them. 
If you want to learn more Swedish, you can do that on SaidInSwedish.com. I've got free lessons for you there. And if you want to support what I do on this channel and support this whole huge massive project, become a Patreon member and you will be able to unlock some extra stuff on the side as well. There are some assignments assignments there that I will um, that I will be able to uh, help you with uh, if you're a patron and so on. So check out Patreon and everything, all the cheers that I have there. And we will see each other in the next video. See you on the Discord server if you want. And if not, we'll see each other in the next video. It's so cold, I don't know what to say right now. I need to get in and warm myself, so. Ha det bra, puss och kram, ta hand om er. Vi ses! Let's check out here. Please stop squeaking. It goes up a little bit lower and down. Um, then this squeaking is shit, scheiße accent. It's an accent that needs to to. Stress. But then.